This video will cover how to replace the inlet and discharge valves along with the pistons and guides on any RG series pump. These are the tools used in the video to repair the machine. Here are the kits and their part numbers needed to service the pump. To replace the discharge and inlet valves on this pump, remove the valve caps on the manifold with a 21mm socket. There are six valves in total on this pump, but I will only be replacing the top three because they are all identical. Next, using a pair of needle nose or reverse pliers, remove the valves by grabbing the plastic valve cage and pulling straight out. Using a pick, take out the O-rings seated below the valves. Once the valves are out, make sure to clean the thread sealer off of the plugs and the ports for your valves to prevent damage when reassembling it. Place in your new O-rings, making sure they are seated flat in the bottom of the manifold. Position the new valves on top of the O-rings and press them down to make sure they are in all the way. Apply a thin layer of thread sealer all the way around the threads when reinstalling the valve caps. Make sure to torque the caps to 478 inch-pounds, or 40 foot-pounds, before the adhesive dries. Always hand tighten the valve caps. Never use the air gun when reassembling your machine, because this can lead to injury to you or damage to your pump. To access the pistons and their guides, start by removing the 8 head bolts with an 8mm Allen socket. The best way to remove the manifold is to support the bottom while tapping the top with a soft face mallet. Do this until there is enough room to evenly pry off the head with two screwdrivers on opposite sides of the pump. Be careful not to apply too much pressure on one side of the pump because this can crack one of the ceramic pistons. Once the manifold is off, there will be parts either on the pistons or still in the head of the machine. To take out parts still in the head, you can use a rear piston guide extractor, which we sell on our website. A small flathead screwdriver can be used to pry out parts that can't be taken out by hand. To remove parts off of the pistons, start by using a wrench or your hand to rotate the crankshaft. This will push the parts toward the end of the piston, making them easier to twist off. The first item to go into the head will be the front support rings, with the flat side facing down. Next comes the high pressure seal. Its concave side should fit over the support ring. New seals can be tough to fit in. Make sure you work them in at an angle and to only use your hands. The rear support ring should fit on top of that. The front piston guide comes next, with the curved side going into the head. To put the rear piston guide in, start by replacing the o-ring on the outside. Then place in the low pressure seal with the flat side first into the guide. Apply a small amount of grease onto the support ring, so it stays in the seal when putting it back into the head. 
If done correctly, you should hear a small click. To replace the pistons, remove the piston bolts using a 10mm socket. Make sure to clean the thread sealer off of the piston bolts too. With the old parts removed, you can now replace the brass plate, followed by the new piston. Add the copper washer to the piston bolt along with a drop of thread adhesive and screw it back in. Apply a thin layer of thread sealer all the way around the threads before retightening the piston bolts. The piston nut is now ready to be torqued to 62 inch pounds. To properly put on the manifold, turn the crankshaft so that the outer pistons are even. This helps with pushing the head back on squarely. New seals may be tight, so you can use a soft-faced hammer to evenly tap it into place while supporting it. Now we can put the head bolts back on. These head bolts should be torqued to 442 inch pounds, or 37 foot pounds. Torquing in a crisscross manner can help evenly tighten the head onto the pump. 